the world is a big circle and what goes around comes around and so if you don't give I think that's going to be noticed at the end. I was sitting in church one day and the rector stood up to give the sermon and said we're not going to talk about the epistle or the gospel today and he talked about being invited to lunch by one of the black preachers in our town and he went and needless to say he drove down streets he was unfamiliar with and he pulled into the parking lot and didn't recognize any of the cars and he walked in the restaurant and he was of course the only white person in there and he probably had some of the best food of his life, right? But he didn't know the people, and that was the point. Uh, this was the time of the BP oil spill, and I don't watch television, but I watched the BP spill because I owned 60 Minutes because I thought it would be pertinent, and then 60 Minutes did a fluff piece, which they don't normally do, and so I thought, well, I'll hang out for that. And so the fluff piece was about a gentleman who was born in Venezuela who got a musical instrument when he was a child, but he didn't have but one pair of shoes, but the musical instrument was the important thing. And now he's grown up and he is the um, conductor of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra and the way he gives back is that he has started a little kids orchestra in uh, Los Angeles. So I watched that, I slept on it, I woke up the next day, I went down to visit the rector and said, here's what we need to do. And he said, go for it, I'm going to help you. And so we started the kids orchestra. First year we had five sites and ten schools. We have 800 kids and when we have some more money then we'll have 900 kids, you know, or 1200 kids or whatever we can have. But the, um, the demand has just, it's just been incredible. Just the idea and the thought alone was exciting to have the students and parents just talk about what was to come before they, it even started, before the first day. When I saw the children playing the instruments, because they had one boy, he had brought his instrument to school, and I was like, how you got there? He said, it's for kids orchestra, and then I told my grandma I want to be in it. So then she signed the paper, and then I brought it back to Mrs. Terrell, and that's how I got in there. My friends told me about it and I was like, oh, I want to try that. And at first I really wanted to do violin, but then when they told me they were doing flute, I, I, kind, of, I, I kind of had to. We're playing like the xylophone. We're playing the percussion, non-pitch percussion instruments like uh, the cymbals, the bells, the, um, the triangle. They're learning all the kind of building blocks of music. The, you know, they're clinking things, they're banging on stuff, they've got rattles and everything else. So they're really getting a, um, a foundation playing those types of instruments in hopes that they are really learning the, the skills that where they can move on to the violin and to the cello and the percussion instruments. You know, the theory of it, how to count the rhythms, how, mm -hmm. what the notes look like, how many beats the notes get and things like that. So once they finish my class, they sort of move on to the next, uh, the next level, playing the instruments. It's really fun. We get to pick out uh, any instrument that we want. My friend Oliver is going to be playing percussion, and Katie's learning to play piano. I started cello, and then whenever I started the school year program, I picked the clarinet. And for one week of summer camp, I did the viola. I did, um, you know, play violin at my elementary, but it was nothing on this level with this many music teachers involved in the actual focus on actual learning, learning music. But, you know, also with the integration with ELA and math. So it's been pretty awesome. I wish we would have had it. <laughs> we do little activities and they help us with our work. And that's how we get good grades. I tutor them in math and ELA. I pull small groups um, because, you know, we want to ensure that these students are getting ahead. I help with homework, mm -hmm. um, but we focus mainly on reading um, and, and the math skills at their grade level. The stick, it's kind of fun to play with, and I just like making music with it because um, I had it with my old school, and I like it. You think you would have to really like break everything down, but they're very smart, very quick, and eager, um, and they'll do you know pretty much anything you ask them to do, which is awesome. Here's my son who's nine, and my daughter who's five, who are playing in, you know instruments that I've never even heard of at that age. Now both of my kids take piano lessons, 
and they're learning to understand music and the music theory and to read music, which is something incredible. And it's something that I wish I had done, you know, in my lifetime, much less at that age. I did a, a lesson with uh, second graders in multiplication and it kind of morphed into a fraction lesson and they were able to understand it because they understood what a quarter note was, what a half note, what a whole note was. And so I was able to actually teach fractions to second graders, so it's pretty awesome. We purposely mix children because the idea here is that we meet the other people in our community and so we make that happen with Kids Orchestra and half the kids get on a bus to go to a different school than they are uh, attending. And so you meet, get to meet your neighbor. Our community benefits because we get to collaborate with both public and parochial schools in the area. So, you know, it brings the neighborhoods together in a positive manner. I'm um, really encouraging the students to embrace the differences that they have with, with um, their friends and different personalities because it's teaching them social skills. It allows kids from every socio and economic background an opportunity to really, you know, explore these, uh, you know, these instruments and how they work and really, you know, become musicians of their own. You wouldn't believe how many kids know kids that wouldn't have ever known them before. I mean, it's just, well, the whole thing is remarkable. The whole experience has been remarkable, but that's one of the many benefits. This opportunity gives them an extra layer of learning by, as I said, learning to persevere, learning to work well with others, to problem solve. They're learning music, they're learning art, and that spans across all disciplines. So it's definitely very positive to have Kids Orchestra collaborating with the uh, private and parochial schools in this area to improve the overall achievement of students. This, I mean, this pulls at your heartstrings. I mean, to see two children hugging of different races. Now, we're not talking about two kids who live next door to each other. I'm talking about kids from different schools here. And they are hugging, and one of them is teaching the other one how to play the flute. I mean, we don't see that other places, and so this is, I think this is fairly unique, and I'm just, I'm thrilled, because it's gonna change our community. With contributions and help from the community, that would go so much further to be able to help and bring as many kids as we can into the program.